Now that we have an understanding of how to create methods, what I want to look at next is how to utilize those methods. And so you see here, we have two methods inside of this program, class 105. Our main method, which is going to call the other methods that we use. And then we have the draw square method, which is going to draw a square using asterisks and an O on the screen. Whenever our program starts in Java, it's going to look for the main method. And once the main method is called, it's going to do the programming statements there within. So the first thing that we do is we have to construct an object of the class 105 class. And we have to do this because we want to use the methods that are inside of there. You'll see the method that we want to use, draw square, is in the class 105 class. It's an important point to note that we cannot use the methods of the class unless an object is created. It could possibly be static, but that's a whole nother topic. So next what we're going to do, because we've created the object, is we're going to use a method of that object, and that is, of course, the draw square method. So it goes to the next line in the main method, which is going to call or invoke the draw square method. So it finds the draw square method, and it's going to run the code therein, and when it runs the code, it's going to print out our square. Once it's done, it's going to come back to the main method and do the next line of code. The next line of code invokes the draw square method again, and therefore another square is drawn. Comes back to the main method. The next thing that it says is to call the draw square method one last time. It does exactly that. So therefore we see on our right that the output is three squares that we've created. Now, what happens if we have more than one method that we're going to use? You can see that we have a draw triangle and we have a draw square method. Let's see how the program flow or the execution flow would work for this particular program. The starting point for all programs is going to be the main method. Once the main method is called, it's going to go and do the code inside of the main method. And again, in order to use the methods, we must construct an object of the class that we're in, and that is the class 105 class, and we call the object test. And test is referring to a class 105 object. So then we call the method using test.drawsquare. Notice it's able to find the method without a problem. The order of the method creation does not matter. You could have draw a square first, you could have draw a triangle first. It's looking for the name of the method, not where it's located inside of the class. And we'll also note that once the draw square method is invoked or called, we see a square drawn on the screen. Next, it comes back to the main method calls the draw triangle method. This time it's going to go to the draw triangle method and draw a triangle on the screen, or what I'm calling a triangle. And then finally it comes back to the main method one last time. There's only one bit of code left, and that is to draw a square once again. So it finds the draw square method, executes what's inside of the method body, and so for our final output we see two squares and one triangle in between. Next, what I want to talk about is where the main method can be placed. You'll see I have the example from the previous slide on the left and a new example on the right, which I've called class 105b. I have various methods inside of both of the classes, the draw square method and the next line and the next int. And where do these methods come from? The draw square method comes from the class 105 class, and next line and next int come from the scanner class. The scanner class, while we're using its methods, you'll notice that its methods are nowhere to be found. You can't see them inside of the program. Whereas on the left side, we know where the draw square method is because it's in the same class that we're working in. Now, let me ask you, which is more common? To have the methods in the same class that we're working in? To have a class utilizing methods and we don't see their implementation? Well, hopefully you've done enough programs to realize that this is the more common method on the right side. There's usually something called a driver or runner or a tester program that contains the main method. And usually the methods that you're using inside the program are nowhere to be found inside of that class. They're found inside of a separate class. So two files are created, one being the driver, runner, or tester file, and the other being the class that's going to be used inside of the runner, driver, or tester file. The driver, runner, tester model, which is far more common in Java to use, 
as most likely most of your methods that you're using will not be in the same class as the current class that you're working in. So let's see how this model of driver, runner, tester having two files would work versus putting everything inside of the same file. On the left, I've renamed my file. Instead of calling it class 105, I've called it the art class. The art class contains the draw square method and the draw triangle method. And over here on the right, I have my art runner, which is going to be my driver or my tester program, which is going to contain the main method. So let's see how this program flow or execution would work. We always start with the main method. Notice there isn't a main method over here because this program is only going to help another program. It's not going to be the program that is actually going to be run in and of itself. So the main method is invoked. Next, we create an object of the class that we want to use. What class do we want to use? Well, we want to use the art class. So we create an object of the art class and we call the object test. It's referencing where the art object is in memory. Next, we're going to invoke the method. It has no problem finding the method, and it will draw a square and now put it on the screen. Next, it'll come back to the main method, go to the draw triangle method. Once it's called, it will draw a triangle on the screen. And then finally, test.drawsquare is going to draw another square on the screen. As long as these two files, the runner and the class file, are in the same folder or in the same project, there isn't going to be a problem running them. It's going to know exactly where the art class is, and you're going to be able to use the methods of the art class. So let's sum it up. Execution starts with the main method, as we've shown in the examples above. The order in which the methods are created does not matter. You're not going to invoke one method, and then it have to be the first method in a class. It looks for the method name, not the ordering. Oftentimes, the main method is in a separate file from the methods that it invokes or calls. You've probably done this with several files if you've ever used the math class, the scanner class, or one of Java's many built-in classes. And the file that contains the main method is often called a driver, runner, or tester file. Once you're able to create a method, it's important to know how that method can be utilized inside or outside of its class. And the computer usually does not have a problem finding the methods as long as it's in the same folder or the same project that you're working in. Once a method is found, it can be invoked, the code is run, and then it goes back to the main method to look for its next steps. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.